Hi, I'm Jeff Sanford. We're here at the Canadian Business Manufacturing Outlook 2008, and we're talking with Linda Hassenfrotz, the CEO of uh, Lindemar Corporation. And uh, Linda, you know, as a CEO of a manufacturing corporation, I wonder if you could tell our viewers what, what you see out there right now. We've got a high dollar, uh, uh, it's a tough environment, and I heard that upstairs. And uh, ask you, what do you, yeah. what do you see? Well, there's certainly no shortage of challenges, yeah. uh, whether you're a manufacturing business or any business in the economy today. We have the, the high dollar has really highlighted areas where our costs are higher than our competitors. And that's become a, a stark reality for a lot of people that we have to manage. Uh, commodity prices are high, economic conditions are not good uh, yeah. and you know so it's all coming together to uh, to paint a pretty negative picture so you know we all need to be very focused on looking at taking a hard look at our businesses and figuring out what do we need to do in terms of strategy what do we need to do in terms of cost and competitiveness in order to ensure that we survive these tough times sure and you know, you mentioned a, a couple things upstairs. Uh, take me through what uh, Lindemar uh, is doing. Uh, you talked about some new business opportunities, uh, diversifying your product line. Yes. Tell me what you guys are doing. Yeah, so, you know, some of the things that we've tried to take a look at is uh, first the strategy that we're using. What are the markets that we're going after? How can we diversify in terms of product, open up more markets for us to pursue, whether they be more product markets? Uh, different uh, segments from a, an, an industrial automotive truck perspective or different geographical markets. So if you're going after a bigger pie, uh, then you know, you're necessarily going to be uh, enabled to grow a little bit easier. Sure. Um, natural hedging programs, you mentioned that phrase up there. What, what, what does that mean? Yeah, that's, uh, that's how we're trying to, to manage the situation with the dollar. So in general, we try to create a, as much of a natural hedge as we can with, uh, with any of our currency exposures. And our largest currency exposure is uh, with the, the U.S. Canadian dollar. So what we've tried to do is manage that situation so that we've got uh, enough U.S. dollar cost to offset the U.S. dollar revenue that we that we uh, have, so that's actually worked pretty well for us in, in the past and helps insulate our current situation. So, for instance, in 2006, we had a total excess U.S. dollars at the end of the year of 70 million dollars mm -hmm. spread over the year. So, you know, not not too much uh, in terms of an exposure. If you look at 2.3 billion dollars in sales you know, 70 million is the total that we have of excess U.S. dollars, so that's the only portion that we experience the exchange uh, change on. Okay. So in other words, we're taking advantage of the strong Canadian dollar to buy goods cheaper in the U.S. Sure. and offset uh, the, the declining U.S. dollar revenue. So that works great to insulate yeah. your current position. Yeah. Uh, we also formally hedge anything, any expected uh, shortfall in terms of our, our natural hedge. So that insulates your current position, but then what you need to do is be very focused on competitiveness, efficiency, and innovation in order to continue to win business. Because as I say, with the, the strong Canadian dollar, when you go to quote the next uh, round of business, uh, you can't you know, just put in uh, a higher price. I mean, you need to be competitive with, uh, with other suppliers, suppliers in the U.S. where, uh, you know, our costs have grown much higher than theirs. We've allowed them to grow uh, as we've been insulated by a weak dollar. And sure. now that the dollar's at par, it's very obvious where those, those higher costs have evolved here in Canada, uh -huh. and we must uh, look to reduce them. So where would you cut some of those costs? Where do you see those coming out? Well, there's a variety of areas. Yeah. I mean, uh, the, the processing, how you're processing your, your product, the type of equipment you're using, the type of tooling that you're using, yeah. the efficiency with which you utilize your people. So uh, do you have a good balance in your line do you, in terms of the work that this person's doing compared to that person? So there's sure. all kinds of opportunities to optimize your productivity. Yeah. Uh, you need to have a hard look at your labor costs and understand how competitive they are to uh, our U.S. competitors. Yeah. When I look at our U.S. competitors, they're 
all in labor costs, labor and benefits, 17 to $20 an hour. Yeah. Uh, if you're more than that, you're not competitive with them. Yeah. So, you know, how, how much more you are, uh, you can uh, deal with in terms of productivity to some extent. If you can sure. work smarter yeah. with fewer people, then you can, you can absorb so, some higher labor costs. Yeah. But, you know, there's not a huge amount that, that you can do to, to take out 20 or $30 an hour worth of difference. So, sure. you know, you need to be very conscious of that. Sure. And all your other purchase costs. I mean, I look at, at our own company, 75% of our sales is something that we're buying. One and a half hmm. billion dollars worth of things that we're buying. Can we be smarter about how we're buying them? Can we bundle uh, a product together to make a bigger opportunity for a supplier, let them have hmm. efficiencies of scale and therefore reduce prices? Can yeah. we change where we're buying something uh, to reduce logistics co cost and that type sure. of thing? Do you find yourself sourcing more from the U.S. already? Well, we, we actually already source a lot from yeah. the U.S. just because yeah. of the nature of our business, the types of castings and forgings that we would purchase to yeah. then machine and assemble are typically more available in the U.S. than they are in Canada. So sure. we're already buying most of that stuff from the U.S. You know, we always hear uh, uh, manufacturers in Canada talk about the need to diversify around the globe. Is that really, is that really feasible? The U.S. is so close, it's your natural kind of export market in a way. Is it is it feasible to go overseas? You guys have Of big course it's yeah. feasible to yeah. go overseas and it would be uh, to to rely only on one market uh, is really limiting your potential. Sure. So for us we've looked to Europe, we've looked to Asia and the huge markets there. I mean just on the automotive side of our business which is, you know, about 45% yeah. of our sales, uh, the the vehicle production in North America is around 16 million units actually it'll be less than a lot less than that this year sure. in Europe it's 20 million and in Asia it's 22 million well, yeah. so those are huge markets yeah. that it would be uh, silly to ignore when yeah. there's lots of opportunity there and in fact we're seeing massive opportunities uh, you know we I talked this morning about the fact that 90 percent of our powertrain driveline business in 2007 was in uh, North America, yeah. whereas 30% uh, of new business wins in 07 was actually outside of North America. So we're seeing accelerated opportunities in uh, these other markets. Well, that's great. Wish you continued success and thank you for taking some time to talk with us today. It's my pleasure. Jeff Sanford, we're here at the Canadian Business Outlook 2008 conference and we've been talking to Linda Hassenprotz, the CEO of Lindemar Corporation.